uh, will <clears throat> have all that fun and excitement. And mm -hmm. of course, for us as the church, is celebrating all the holy people of God who have served faithfully is uh, in their life, who've gone before us, who inspire us to continue on. So it's not just the saints who we know by name, but all those who have faithfully served our Lord that we celebrate uh, with our feast uh, tomorrow. So we begin our service on page 106, page 106. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, so that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Mm -hmm. Amen. Blessed is the kingdom of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now mm -hmm. and always. Mm -hmm. Amen. Hear the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our prayer will continue with our collect, the 22nd Sunday after Trinity, uh, collecting us together in a common prayer, which has been for 2,000 years and throughout the world, for at least 1,500 years, these, uh, the prayer we use on Sunday has been used. So let me bring up. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Lord, Lord God, keep your household, the church, in constant holiness, so that by your protection we may be freed from all adversity and with devotion serve you in good works to the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and rules with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And our New Testament reading. A reading from St. Paul's Epistle to the Philippians, the first chapter, beginning at the third verse. I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, for you all making my prayer with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to feel this way about you all because I hold you in my heart for you are all partakers with me of grace, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, how I yearn for you all with the affection of Christ Jesus. And it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment so that you may approve what is excellent. And so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel, so that it has become known throughout the whole Imperial Guard and to all the rest that my imprisonment is for Christ. And most of the brothers, having become confident in the Lord by my imprisonment, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Some indeed preach Christ from envy and rivalry, but others from goodwill. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Be to God. And our reading of the psalm. 
A reading from the Psalm 133 chapter, beginning at the first verse. Behold, how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head, running down on the beard, on the beard of Aaron, running down on the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord has commanded the blessing, life forevermore. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will forever, now and always. Amen. Amen. Um. <clears throat> Stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel is written in the 18th chapter of the gospel according to St. Matthew, beginning at the 21st verse. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Peter came up and said, and said to Jesus, Lord, how often will my brother sin against me and I forgive him? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, I do not say to you seven times, but 70 time, 77 times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his servants. When he began to settle, one was brought to him who owed 10,000 talents. And since he could not pay, his master ordered him to be sold with his wife and children and all that he had and payment be made. So the servant fell on his knees, imploring him, have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the master of that servant released him and forgave him the debt. But when that same servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him, he began to choke him, saying, Pay what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me and I will pay you. He refused and went and put him in prison until he should pay the debt. When his fellow servants saw what had taken place, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their master all that had taken place. Then his master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. And should not you have had mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his master delivered him to the jailers until he should pay all his debt. So also my heavenly Father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. We'll continue on page 108 with the ancient statement of the Christian faith, the Nicene Creed, page 108. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man. And he was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. On the third day he rose again in keeping with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He shall come again with glory to judge the living and the dead. And his enemies will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. God, in his covenant with Noah, you may recall, the sign of it was the rainbow of God's uh, promise to his people. God told Noah, be fruitful and multiply. He didn't say, your life is going to be the same, plain, and ordinary every day. And being around children, <laughs> you know that change is one of those things that's built in. Well, in making that covenant with Noah, he in fact says there in Genesis 8, chapter, uh, chapter 8, verse 22, while the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. We're to expect that there will be change. And we also know that change always comes with challenge as well. Some of us have felt the challenges of change these past year and a half, but there are lots of other things happening in our lives that challenge us as well. And we need to be reminded that there is no growth without change, and there's no change without loss, and there's no loss without a hole that needs to be healed. And that's what God wants for us is that in change, our lives might be healed, made whole. In fact, not just made whole, but made holy. That what was a part that was missing, God would take and create something more glorious. And so what are we to do amongst all the changes that challenge us in our lives every day? Well, the first thing is that we, well, I, I ask the question, will, will I wait on the Lord? Will I attend? Think of waiting in terms of uh, serving table. The waiter, the waitress, serving anticipating the needs, providing for in my life? Am I going to be looking to a, how God can use my life, how the things in my life will in fact serve God? And it's important in the midst of the challenges of change because I don't know about you, but I feel, felt more worn out during these past months in many respects, even though I've had more opportunity to sleep. Well, what does uh, God say in the book of Isaiah, 40th chapter, that chapter of God's promise? He says, even youths shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. 
They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Well, if you're stressed by all the rapid and relentless change, changes that are going on, and they come, it seems, wave after wave, waiting for the Lord, attending to our Lord, is where that strength is going to enter into our lives, mounted up like as on eagle's wings. In our daily life, that's the function that morning prayer is to have for us, that each day we would ask God to renew our lives. The prayers and the Bible readings allow us to see our coming day in light of what it is that God, God is doing. Then make those adjustments to make those the priority in our life. And so morning prayer is bringing your day, your action, your schedule in line with what God desires for you planning and prayer, in fact, go together before we start into the day, before you go in to meet with somebody and you know it may be difficult or you face a challenge. That's the time for our prayer to ask that we might do it for the glory of God, to see God's hand the possibility that God is going to enter in to that difficult situation. And so we attend to him. James in the first chapter says, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given to him. God wants to give that wisdom that insight of something greater going on. And so we look to him. And then second, will I focus on God's constants, that is, the eternal? Focusing on what will last rather than things that are passing away. Jeremiah chapter 31, he writes and says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. God turns mourning into joy. So what can I count on in my life facing all the challenges that are going on? Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. There it is in Jeremiah, chapter 31. God loves you with an everlasting love, constant and eternal. In the book of Psalms, in Psalm 33, he writes and says, uh, uh, the counsel of the Lord stands forever, the plans of his heart to all generations. What will get you through in difficult times of change and ch that are challenging you is to hold on to those things that are going to last, the things that don't change. God's plan, God's purpose, God's promise, I mean, they're not a mo moving target. You don't have to guess what it is that God wants and desires. It's been constant all the way along. What changes? It's my life that changes. And so I need to see how those eternal things of God fit in to the very things that I'm doing where there is change. What does it look like? We like to fool ourselves that we're 
as a society learning more and more truth? No, there's just more and more complexity. Our circumstances change. But those things that are good and right, how we treat one another, how we honor God, those things don't change. The level of our science and technology may think, make things more complex, may make it more difficult to decide how God's truth is going to be worked out in this circumstance. I mean, every time there's a new, uh, new breakthrough in, uh, in medicine, extending of life, what does that mean for us in choosing what's good and right? It's a new circumstance, a new challenge for us. And then thirdly, I will put my trust in God daily. Trusting God each and every day. And it's not always easy to do. We work at it. We're to take up our cross daily and follow our Lord. And it's not that my life is going to be perfect, that I'm going to be perfect, or your life is going to be perfect, you'll be perfect. I mean, who do we make statues of? Christopher Columbus and Thomas Jefferson were not perfect people. Some of the saints that we're celebrating were, in fact, bigoted. They were flawed people. David, the greatest hero of the Old Testament, was a flawed man. He killed his best friend so that he could have a romantic relationship with his wife. What, who does God use? He uses flawed people like you and me. And what makes the difference is when I've turned away, will I turn back to God? Will I trust him, his forgiveness to enter in, to make up where I've turned away where I've fallen, where I've done those things that are wrong. Well, it takes great courage to turn to God, to admit that I've done things that are wrong. It's very popular, especially in our day and age. The special pleading that goes on, Oh, well, you need to make exceptions. These, these circumstances were, were special. Or my favorite is, I excuse myself for the following sins rather than accuse myself for them. <laughs> well, the reality is I need God's forgiveness. I need his help in my life, and I need to trust him on a daily basis to take up my cross, to follow him in the very things, in the challenges that I face. And when I fall short, to ask God to step in with his goodness and grace, to forgive my sin. So, what did Jesus teach his followers to pray? Lord, make me perfect today. No, it was, forgive us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins. Well, amongst all the challenges that we face in our life, that challenge is the challenge for us every day. To trust in God, knowing that God is working things to the good. 
and will. I give my heart to him for this day. What does it say in uh, Psalm 27? It says, Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war arise against me, I will be confident. How are we to be confident in the days ahead? It's by our waiting on God. It's by our focusing on those things that last, the eternal, and to put my trust in God each and every day, to be given that daily bread and to be forgiven, to walk with our Lord no matter where we are and no matter what the challenge is. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Offer to God the sacrifice of thanksgiving, and make good your vows to the Most High. We'll be offering ourselves and... Blessed are you, Lord God of creation, through your goodness. We have the many gifts that you have given to us. Up on the top of page 109. All things come from you, O Lord, and of your own have we given you. Blessed are you, Lord God of creation, through your goodness. We have this bread to offer formed of the earth, the work of human hands, sanctified that it may be for us, the body of Christ, the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer the fruit of the vine, the work of human hands, sanctified that it may be for us, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. As we offer up ourselves, we do so with special intention, asking for God's help and grace, his healing enter in, entering into our lives, that we might draw closer to him in the things that we face this day and during our week. It is also offered on this day for all those saints who have gone before us to encourage us uh, along the way. It is also offered for all those for whom we've been bidden to pray, uh, all those in need of healing and protection in their lives. Almighty and ever-living God, by your holy apostle Paul, you have taught us to offer our prayers and requests and to give thanks for all people. In your mercy, we humbly ask you to receive our prayers and oblations, which we offer to your divine majesty. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask you to continually inspire your entire church with the spirit of harmony, unity, and truth, and grant that all who confess your holy name may agree in the truth of your holy word and live in unity and godly love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, direct the hearts and thoughts of our leaders of government so that they may make wise decisions, administer justice, punish wrongdoers, and encourage right conduct and true religion, give to all in authority, the President of the United States, the Governor of this state, the legislature, the leaders of our towns, villages, and the communities which surround us, the wisdom and strength to know and to do your will. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, give your grace to all pastors, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, especially Ray and Walter, our bishops, and to every leader in our fellowship. May they show forth your true and living word by their life and teaching, by their right and faithful administration of your holy sacraments, and by their training and equipping your people for ministry. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And to all your people give your heavenly grace, so that they may, with pure hearts and minds, hear and receive your holy word, truly serving you in right conduct and holiness of life all the days of their life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we humbly ask you in your goodness, O Lord, to comfort, visit, and relieve all those in need of your healing touch, more especially Linda, Steve, Joey, 
Karen, Dave, Ron, Kurt, Suzanne, Timothy, Rick, Sarah, Judith, Jules, Casper, Carl, Diane, Ashton, Liz, Nelson, Steve, Jeanette, Tom, Kim, Jan, Jack, Chris, Alice, Maureen, Robert, Greg, Tiffany, Mary, Edward, Nancy, and Roseanne. For all those who were aged and infirm, especially Betsy and Carl, and for all those who needed the strength and guidance of the Holy Spirit in their lives, more especially Pat, Keith, Suzanne, and their family, Rich, Kim and her family, Bonnie Ray, Bob, Robert, Angela, Jeff, Mo, Sean, Pat, Denise and their family, Barb and her family, Adam, Loretta. Remember all those who are seeking employment, especially Philip and Joseph. And all those who in this earthly life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, danger, distress, or any other difficulty, relieve and strengthen, help and deliver them by your mighty hand. Remember before you all those serving in our armed forces, both at home and abroad, more especially Chris, Donnie, and Taylor, asking that you would protect them with your mighty arm. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious and merciful Lord, who works all things together for the good of those who love you, we offer you our thanks for all the blessings you have granted to your people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we bless your holy name, O Lord, for all your servants who have died in the faith of Christ. Grant them grace to love and serve you forever. We entrust to your mercy all who have died, especially John. Give us grace to follow the good examples of those who have gone before us in the faith, so that with them we may be partakers of your heavenly kingdom. Lord, grant them eternal rest. And may your everlasting light shine upon them. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate, who lives and rules with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and always. Amen. Amen. You who truly and earnestly repent of your sins are in love and peace with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and by walking daily in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to comfort you and make your humble confession to Almighty God devoutly near. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all people, we acknowledge, confess our many sins and wrongdoings which we have committed from time to time by thought, word, and deed against your divine majesty, justly bringing your sorrow and anger upon us. We earnestly repent, and from our hearts are sorry for all our wrongdoings. Remembering them weighs heavily upon us. The burden of them is more than we can bear. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that from this time forward we may serve and please you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your name through jesus christ our lord amen. amen almighty god our heavenly father who of his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn to him have mercy upon you pardon and deliver you from all your sins confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through jesus christ our lord amen, amen. Hear the comforting words of our Savior to all who truly turn to him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that all who believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. 
and hear the words of Paul the Apostle. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And John the Evangelist says, If anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is fitting and our duty to do so. It is very fitting, right, and our duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim and magnify your glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Glory to you, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to you, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for you of your tender mercy gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and it instituted in his holy gospel, commanded to continue a perpetual memory of his most precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, Lord and Heavenly Father, According to the institution of your dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we, your humble servants, do celebrate and make here before your divine majesty. With these, your holy gifts, which we now offer to you, the memorial your Son has commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering to you most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits provided to us by the same. Merciful Father, we humbly ask you to hear us, and of your almighty goodness to bless and sanctify with your word and Holy Spirit these your gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we receiving them according to your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire your fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly asking you to grant that, by the merits and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all your whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present to you, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice to you, humbly asking you that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with your grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us, and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our many sins to offer to you any sacrifice, yet we humbly ask you to accept this, our essential duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses, through Jesus Christ our Lord, Amen. by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, are given all honor and glory, O Father Almighty, now and always. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Amen. Father in heaven, Amen. hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> We do not presume to come to this your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your abundant and great mercy. We are not worthy to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the Lord who always has mercy upon his people. Therefore, gracious Lord, grant that we may eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and drink his blood, so that our sinful bodies and souls may be made clean by his body and be washed in his precious blood that we may forever live in him and be in us. Amen. O Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world, grant us your peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. body of our Lord Jesus Christ, given to preserve your body and soul to everlasting life. Take me to the remembrance of Christ's life, and see by him your heart by faith with them. Lord, and deign to be our guest. Nay, let us be thy guests, that feast is thine. Thyself at, at thine own board make manifest, and this our sacrament of bread and wine. Come in us, and in that upper room they met. Thou at the table blessing yet dost stand. This is my body, so thou givest yet. Faith still receives the cup as, as from thy hand. When body we, when body do partake, when church united in communion blessed, when name we bear, the bread of life we break, with all thy saints on earth and saints at rest. One with each other, Lord, for one in, three, in thee, who art one Savior and one living head. Then open thou our eyes that we may see, be known to us in breaking of the bread. Our prayer continues on page 116, page 116. <clears throat> Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, from our hearts we thank you for feeding us in these holy mysteries, 
with the spiritual food and the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, thereby assuring us of your favor and love, and that we are living members in the mystical body of your Son, the blessed fellowship of all faithful people, and that in the sacrifice and death of your Son, we are heirs through the hope of your eternal kingdom. Heavenly Father, we ask you to assist us with the help of your grace, so that we may continue in your holy fellowship and walk in every good work which you have prepared for us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit are given in all honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Guard your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Jesus said to his disciples, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Tomorrow is All Saints Day, and uh, we will be using uh, this same Sunday link uh, for Holy Communion at 9.30 in the morning. Uh, that'll be it. Uh, I'll be broadcasting from uh, Betsy and Mary Ann's home. Uh, and we'll be mm -hmm. using the 1928 prayer book uh, for that service. That's 9.30 tomorrow. Uh, the rest of our weekday services will be as usual, 6 o'clock uh, um, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then Friday at 9.30 in the morning. Next Sunday is going to be an online uh, only service, uh, unless Father Gregory is going to be uh, taking the service for us uh, uh, here on Sunday morning. I've come flying in at the last minute from our camp out, uh, but, uh, uh, or I'll be flying home and, and did to do the last minute there. Um, in any case, uh, that'll be next, next Sunday uh, at 10 a.m. So uh, have a uh, great Sunday. Let me uh, just turn this, uh, oh, let me, let me actually, let me close out the, uh, no, I'll just uh, end stream. There we go. All right.